December 1st, 2021, a new dinosaur, Stego Rose, is published. Immediately standing out for its unique tail. Sporting seven pairs of fused bony armor. I built a small scale model. The pose is inspired by this little guy's cautious behavior. I can then measure these angles and apply them to full-size bones. Now we have the template. I only have a little time before summer ends, so we better get started. I'm using a thinner wood for this piece, so we can bend it to the curve of the tail. The frame is finished, now we gotta fill out the body. I'm using wire mesh. This mesh will create a strong surface for the other materials to grip onto. I'm reusing some packing paper I saved to fill this large gap. Now the other materials can grip the mesh without falling through. Nice and secure. There's our armature. Let's go to the store. This project could get expensive. This is expanding spray foam. Available exclusively at Lowe's. Also exclusively at Home Depot. Wear you some gloves. All right. It's time to spray. Uh, that doesn't look right. It's barely coming out. In hindsight, I shouldn't have purchased the rusty can exclusively at Home Depot. Okay, fresh can for real this time. Nice. Now it's flowing. Much better. That was very fun. And an important step. The foam will continue to expand as it sets. All dry. Now we can carve away the excess material, creating the desired shape. It's got some growths on the underside. I'm gonna add some plastic mesh and some wood glue for strength. Let's check the skeletal to see where the hips stick out. That's where we'll attach the mesh muscles. It's very hot out. It's to the point where I've flipped my collar up. That's a sheep need shearing. I discovered the plastic mesh is actually better because you can cut through it. That's looking more leg-like. Let's add some more foam.
It's still wet, but I want to try out a different type of foam. This one's supposed to be denser. Listen to that. Very quiet compared to the last one. It's also stretchy like marshmallow. Looking a little puffy today in the arm area. Let's carve out that chonky rib cage. This white foam is denser, but I don't really have a preference. The tail was a little long, so... Delicious. Now to refine the shapes. This is where it really starts to come together. I usually sculpt by adding materials such as clay, but carving it away is pretty fun. Carving complete. But look at those holes. And that one. This is automotive body filler. Don't forget your dust mask. It's kind of like a peanut butter resin. This is the chemical hardener. Recommended by 3 out of 10 dentists. There isn't an exact ratio. You'll know you've added enough when it hardens while you're still trying to use it. Now he has a hard candy shell, but it's coarse and rough. We need to unroughen it with a grater or a rasp. Now everything's smooth. Oh, what's this? A new material to work with. Thank you. This is foam clay. I've never used it before. It's stretchy and weirdly light. When it hardens, it's like EVA foam that you can't get wet. I'm going to use this to sculpt the skin folds. I'm referencing a Komodo dragon for the forearms. And this fold from a baby rhino. We can also use this to sculpt the tail spikes. But how are we going to sculpt the fine details? Surely not by hand. It would take too long. It would also be expensive and take too long. We need a giant stamp. This will seal the clay and give it a glossy finish. We're going to make a mold. I need a lot of silicone putty, so I asked Let's Resin to send me some for free, and they said fine. So let's try it out. Get it on there before it starts to set up. And then 20 minutes later, we have our molds. I sculpted additional textures for the legs and sacral shield. After marking out where the armor will go, I realized these are too big to fit in between them. So I took a portion of the texture and made some additional smaller molds that'll fit much nicer. One dollar mixing tray. This is where the automotive putty is really going to shine. I learned this technique from a friend on Instagram. Let's see if it works. It does work. Then it worked and worked and worked again. It worked so much my gloves wore thin. We're almost out of putty. We're down to the last bit of my last can. I'm going to use it to make a few extra patches, which will fill in a bunch of these gaps. Any bit I can fill in, I won't have to sculpt later. Putty patches done. 
For the next step, we'll need to travel to the stagnant swamp of a Dray Riverbed. Hopefully we can find what we are looking for. An Osteodum fossil. This is what gave Stigaras its bonny armor. And this is what I'll be using to make them. It's the improved Saturn II, sent over to me by Elegoo, with a larger build volume, built-in filter, and exhaust hatch. Although I already exhaust mine from a grow tent. All done. I modeled a few variations. I'm using the ultraviolet rays of the sun to finish curing the prints. How many osteoderms do you think there are? There's a lot. I'll tell you later when I add the last one. Now we can finally go inside. Just enough room. Now that the patches are done, it's time to sculpt in between them and around everything else. For that, I'm using epoxy clay. Mixing the two parts together creates a chemical reaction giving me an hour to sculpt before it turns into hard plastic resin. Now we're sculpting. I had some dry merch. Oh wow. Nice. <laughs> That's pretty good. I finally have official Kayakosaurus merch printed by Bonfire. It's like wearing a portal to another world right on your shirt. I pre wrinkled mine, but you can wrinkle yours when you get it. The shirts will ship in two batches, and the first batch ends on January 31st. Now let's get back to Stego Rose. The body is done. I sculpted around every patch and the underside. But it's missing something. 16 more osteoderms. For a total of 84. Foam clay makes a return to sculpt the feet. with some epoxy clay over that. Some of these scales are too small and hard to reach, so I'm going to make a stamp. The feet are finished. Time for the tail. 
I've been waiting for this. Stegoros's tail osteoderms transform into a spiky flat sheath instead of a tail club. Towards the tip of the tail, the osteoderms are actually fused together. The osteoderms would have been covered in keratin, which might have rippled as they grew against each other. Now for the most important part, the head slash face. I'm using a reconstruction I found on this Instagram account. For the head, I'm switching to polymer clay so that I'm not limited to the one hour work time of epoxy and it's non-toxic. So I'm gonna need all bakeable materials such as cardboard, hot glue, and aluminum foil. The hot glue will melt, but by then the clay will be holding everything in place. Speaking of, let's start with some original Sculpey, which is cheaper and a lot easier to spread around. Don't forget to sculpt the inside. This is our main clay, Super Sculpey Medium. It's a little hard, but it just needs some conditioning. And now it's also in a convenient flat form. Now I have the shape of the skull, we can bake that and add the skin over it without worrying about messing up that underlying shape. These knobby crests would have been covered in keratin as well. For the head scales, I'm referencing this fancy tortoise. These long curves are unnatural, so I had to go over and make them more zigzag. The tortoise scales had a concave dimple divot shape to them, so I'm adding that in. For the smallest scales, I'm going to use a texture stamp. We can get even smaller with this stamp, which has tiny holes made from a toothpick. I'm looking at cassowaries for the rough keratin texture of these crests. All done with some temporary eyes installed. The mouth being open means we're going to need some teeth. Sculpting and gluing individual teeth sounds like too much work. Let's see if we can make them in a sequence. Now I'm just pinching the teeth to sharpen them. That was surprisingly easy. A little isopropyl alcohol to remove the fingerprints. He has a tongue, it's just not glued in. Let's add some creases in the cheek to show how the mouth would move. I'm adding some more clay to build this area up. And this is going to be the ridge of the lower lip. I'm countering that downward facing curve with an upward one, so he doesn't look like he's frowning or smiling. It's coming together. Don't forget the beak. You probably think I used a reference. Of course I did. I finished the neck with more foam clay and epoxy over that. Before painting, let's turn this into a digital model with this little guy. It's pretty cool to see it appear in real time. Creality sent this a year ago, but they didn't have the Mac software, so it's just been sitting here. I made a few separate scans and stitched them together. Now I can print them at any size, such as these sizes. These guys are available in my Etsy shop. I also printed something else. I want to try 3D printing more realistic eyes. 
I hollowed out a dome shape and sculpted the details onto the inside of it. I based these on the intricate details of gecko eyes, but with a rounder pupil. A glossy clear coat will make them transparent again. Now I can paint from inside of the eye. Just thin the paint and it will flow right into the details of the iris. Wipe away the excess paint, then I can add the colors of the iris. I'm using a metallic green. That's way finer than I could get with a paintbrush. It's in desperate need of eyelids, but it will have to wait. I found a lot of air bubbles, but I only need to fill the big ones. That's what I tell myself. Lots of sanding. For primer. And paint. Orange? What is this, a pumpkin? Of course not. The orange is from this. Another gecko. A three-lined knob gecko. He can be tall and stealthy. And I can use that 3D model we made to test out the color patterns. Ooh, not bad. Airbrush time. This is my weird airbrush. I'm going to give another shot. Yeah, I prefer the other one. Now I'm marking out the edge of the dark stripes. Hey, the dark stripes. Base colors down. Now we need to make them pop with a wash. The skin textures I made for the legs have larger scales and osteoderms built into them. We can bring those out with a color change. He's getting a case of the yellow knees. This neck should fade from brown and a blue or purple. The purple from this stripe fades out onto the arm. I'm dry brushing these scales and then switching to a light wash for a different effect. Now I'm painting the border of these colors with a dark gray, as if the pigments from both sides combined. Since these scales are similar in hue to the surrounding ones, I can do them with an airbrush, without clashing with my hand-painted ones. Now let's paint the face. It was a little tricky to adapt from the gecko reference, but not impossible. I had to bend this paintbrush to fit in, but that worked really well. More acrylic wash. Having this tail removable is really coming in handy. I was looking for a reference when I saw that cow horns have dark brown tips. That might work for our Stegoros tail.
The working outside time has definitely passed. It's freezing out here. I can't even paint. But we're done painting. It's time to put that eye in there. And the well-earned eyelids. We made the stegoros. But it doesn't belong inside. It belongs in a forest. Big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Thanks for watching, buy the merch, and see you in the next one. Kayak out.